Jesus. Jesus. Yeshua. Amashia. Ryana Judah. Listen, the Lord told me this afternoon, this is a word for 40 people, 40 people, that the strong man in your family is going down. Yeah. It's for 40 people. The Lord said, tell 40 persons that the strong man in their families, in their father's house, in their mother's house, are going down tonight. Yeah. Yeshua, Amashia, Ryan of Judah. Father, tonight we thank you for your power and your presence that is in this place, for the things that you are already doing. We thank you because tonight is a night of deliverance. Tonight is a night of liberty. Tonight is a night of emancipation. And the house of Jacob and the house of Pneumatic shall possess her possession. Lord, let your word come with power. Give us light give us insight let the enemies submit themselves tonight let your great name be glorified that when we leave this place after tonight's service even our even our enemies even the heathens will know that we have truly met Elohim that we have met El Shaddai the strong and mighty one let your name be glorified in Jesus precious name amen take your seat in the presence of the Lord welcome to new matter Yeshua Amashia Lion of Judah Hallelujah. Are we ready tonight? The spirituality looks like they are changing my message already. Amen. Well, thank you very much for that powerful ministration. Lawful captives, part three. Lawful captives. Somebody is correcting me. Say part four. No, it's not part four. It's part three. Okay. The first one was a preview. A preview is not part of the. Huh? Some of you, you watch a lot of season films, so you can use season one, season two. Amen. I love the word of God, and I believe that we are going to be immersed in the light that comes from God's word today we'll take time a little time to teach the word and then we will rise up to pray and then we are going to take the communion tonight God is going to do great and you know I've always wondered and for those that are following online I want you to whether you are watching by Facebook or you are listening via online radio Mixelar, I want you to be truly connected to this service in your heart and in your soul i want to believe that god will touch you where you are there are people connecting from different places i know that there are several people connecting from hospitals and the lord will do you good in jesus name the bible says in the book of matthew chapter 8 in verse 16 that when the evening had come 
they brought unto him many who were demon possessed and he cast out the spirits with a word and healed all who were sick tonight i know that god is going to destroy yokes god is going to tackle oppressions many of us will experience deliverance from long-standing bondages and the sick will be healed tonight so while we minister the word in prayers and through the communion i want you to get ready because the power of god is going to touch your life you can't leave this place still thinking that you are bound as a matter of fact after this service some of you may not need to see me again are you hearing me yes there's no need having a powerful service and after the service you are still going to the man of god to complain no that means you didn't believe all that happened so tonight i need you to have violent faith i need you to have the kind of faith like the centurion he said just send the law the word speak your word and my servant will be healed as the word is coming forth to you god is addressing cases in your life some you may not even be aware of he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from destructions the word of god is intelligent in itself to do everything that God desires that it should do in your life. So those of us here on ground, inside, outside, those of us online, I want you to get ready tonight for what the Lord will do. Anyone that came here afflicted, this is the end of that affliction tonight. Anyone that came in with any kind of sickness, I bring you a word from the throne room. Whatever the name of that sickness is, the Bible says there is a name higher than every other name and that name is what Jesus. i want you to shout that name again Jesus. and because of the power that is in that name every affliction you came with today is living your life forever Jesus. in the name of jesus christ are we ready can i go ahead okay now i've always the the, the, the teaching of deliverance is a very interesting subject and i believe that in these last days that god is raising servants of his anointing them by his spirit to bring the body of christ into the required amount of light from the word of god that will occasion deliverance and bring about total emancipation and victory in the life of a believer I believe that God is announcing. In fact, some of you are here. God is raising you and is going to anoint you and use you as a judge, as a deliverer in your generation. Because the sons of the kingdom must be free. Are you hearing me? He said, upon Mount Zion, the first thing that will happen there is what? Deliverance. Deliverance. Deliverance is a very broad subject and the more as we examine it this period and I take time to study the word and look at the lives of people, I discover how that many people are held bound. Many people are held captive to different kinds of oppressions. In fact, majority don't even know that they are bound. And for some people, you know, it's not a disgrace for you to realize that you need deliverance it doesn't matter your title are you hearing me even when i started ministry i saw some things in my life that i knew needed deliverance they needed the intention of deliverance and i was humble enough to submit myself to the ministry of deliverance because you can't get people free except you are free you can't tackle the issue of altars, satanic altars, altars that are 300, 500, 800 years old. These things are real. Let me tell you the truth. You can't tackle those things if you are still bound by an altar. No. And you know, one of the things that the devil does to us ministers, with all due respect, is because of self-esteem and reputation, trying to protect your reputation where you know you examine your life and you discover that there are certain question marks that the only thing that can answer to them are the ministry of deliverance but because we don't want to 
own up to the fact that we need deliverance even as men of God we try to hide that part of our life and try to be the emancipators of those who are bound but one of the ways that you know that you have been assigned by God to bring deliverance to a generation is that the Spirit of God comes on you and the Spirit of God that comes on you breaks every yoke that is around your life so that you too can become a deliverer you too can become a savior he says saviors shall arise Obadiah verse 21 shall arise from Mount Zion and judge the Mount of Esau and the kingdom will be the Lord's so all through this series as the word is coming forth it is important that you examine your life and realize that there are certain things in your life that will make you seek the power and the ministry of deliverance and if you are here tonight humble enough to receive i want you to know that tonight is your night in the name of jesus christ i always will ask a question why are we saved to become priests revelations 1 verse 6 i've started the teaching but you know just this is just preamble okay but listen carefully to what i'm saying make sure you are not distracted tonight revelations 1 verse 6 revelations 5 verse 10 the bible says he has made us priests and kings and the question is why were we saved to become priests he would have saved us to become any other thing he would have saved us to become ambassadors king is enough that we are saved as kings is enough why priests why priesthood in the life of a believer the answer to that question is in your understanding of what a, or who a priest is a priest is a mediator a priest is a go-between a priest is one who makes atonement for others a priest is a deliverer are you hearing me so for you to understand why we were saved to become priests is because God needs that which has been achieved by the sacrifice of Christ Jesus on the cross to not only be made available but to be enforced in the life of his children that's why we are saved as priests so that you too can stand on behalf of your father's house you too can stand on behalf of your mother's house you too can stand on behalf of your descendants that will come after you and insist that the victory that the freedom that they have obtained in christ jesus is not only available but is enforced and is a reality in their life that's why we are saved as priests so that certain things that have gained legal premise on our lives you know the reason this 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 deliverance we're talking about lawful captives that means this is the deliverance for those whom satan has a right or a reason to hold bound this is not the kind of deliverance where you just tell the demon come out no this is the kind of deliverance where you have to argue your case and bring forth strong reasons for why satan must let go of that family satan is an illegal spirit but he understands the justice system of god and if he finds you wanting he can use it against you so in the face of that the bible says in isaiah 42 verse 22 it said behold these are a people robbed and plundered they are spoiled they are snared in holes and in dens he said they are taken for a prey and none says deliver none delivers they are taken for a spoil and none says restore he was talking about his people his covenant people the children of israel that god covenanted himself with yet they were robbed yet they were plundered so this kind of deliverance is not the kind that you say in my name they shall cast out demons no in fact as a matter of fact this is not the kind of deliverance where you just deal with demons so this is the, the deliverance where you deal with dem with spirits principalities and powers senior ranking satanic spirits jesus crossed over to the other side met a demoniac he said come out of him the demon didn't come out the demon remained there and then a discussion began that's the kind of deliverance we are talking about 
that for Jesus, the King of Kings, the word that was made flesh. In fact, most times Jesus, he will, before even casting out demons, the Bible will say, unclean spirits saw him and cried out. His presence brought deliverance. If Jesus, and the Bible says in Mark chapter 1, in verse 23 or 24, Jesus was teaching in a synagogue, in a church. Oh, in a church, he was teaching amongst the Jews, the children of Abraham. And the Bible says there was a man with an unclean spirit. And in my Bible, when I was reading that place, I wrote, I wrote there, witchcraft in the church. In the church. And the Bible says the unclean spirit began to cry. Jesus was used to that. Yet, he met a demoniac. And for the first time, a demon will contend with the authority and the command that Jesus gives. The reason is because those spirits were in the life of that man based on a legal transaction that had happened without his knowledge so jesus could not just come though he was king of kings and lord of lords he could not just come and tell the spirits to go it was their home it was their territory they had license to stay there in genesis 49 look for the verse and put it there Jacob was speaking to his sons and then he spoke to one of his sons called God. He said, God, a troop shall overcome him. A troop is the same thing as legion. And the legion is about four to 6,000 soldiers. So spiritually, you know what that means. It means a legion is a prince, a, a satanic prince that has control over four to 6,000 demons. Some of you have not seen that kind of deliverance. You, have not, you don't know that a human being can carry that amount of spirit in his body. He said, a troop shall overcome him and he shall overcome at last. So the demons were in that man because of a legal transaction from the mouth of Jacob. Jacob pronounced it. So the demons, thousands of years later, found their way so just because you were born innocent doesn't mean you're actually innocent after all that there are transactions there are activities that were made before you were born from your bloodline from your li you better listen and believe it though i know many of us have gone to different places and many things have been taught and i believe in those things that you have been taught but you see no revelation is exclusive in itself revelation is progressive what they taught you there is what they were given to teach so they are correct this one too is correct are you hearing what i'm telling you this one too is correct why did god tell abraham come out of your father's house god could bless him there the bible calls him the god of all the earth the earth is the Lord's and its fullness thereof. Location is not, a, is not an issue with God. Why did God have to say, come out from your father's house? So you know that the father's house God was talking about was not just a physical structure. And say, Abraham, this is the, the house of Abraham's father. No. When the Bible speaks of house, it's not just talking about a physical structure like this. When he speaks about house, he's talking about your, your bloodline, your lineage, everything that comes out of your body. The house of Jacob, the house of Douglas, the house of Peter, everything, including your great grandson that has not been born, is part of it. Because the Bible says that the reason why Titan is not an Old Testament or a New Testament doctrine, it is a kingdom requirement, it's a kingdom doctrine. Because Levi who the Old Testament priesthood started with. The Bible says he was in the loins of Abraham when Abraham was paying tithe to Melchizedek. So this is not about Old Testament, New Testament thing. God said, come out of your father's house. Guess what? When Isaac was to get married, what did Abraham do? He sent them back to his father's house. The same house that God said, come out from. And Isaac struggled the same things that Abraham struggled with. In fact, the Bible says Isaac had to pray hard 
Genesis chapter 25. If you read it, I believe verse 21 and verse 22. If you read it in message translation, it says, Isaac prayed hard. Hard. He had to bring strong reasons. And that prayer took 20 years. Because Isaac was 40 years when he married. It was when he was 60 that Rebecca gave birth. If you are here and you are tired of hard labor, you are tired of prolonged affliction, then I want you to pay attention tonight. Because what will come to you tonight by reason of the word of God will set not only you at liberty, but even your siblings that are connected to you, that you can see and x-ray in their life, that there are certain transactions in the family that has affected them. They will be free tonight and the generations coming after you will come to enjoy a common ground. I wish your amen could be louder. Amen. When Jacob wanted to marry, the same thing. They sent him back to his father's house. So the cycle continued. That was why Jacob's children never went back there. And that was when Israel was established. So the more I read my, my Bible every day, I don't know if you, you have another thing to counter with it, but the more I read the Bible every day, the more I see that these things are real. Foundations, altars, patterns, these things are real. And I have seen it plague the lives of people. In fact, the one that pays me most is anointed people. I have seen people that I know that are anointed, more anointed than me. But you just keep seeing this cycle following their life. Kai, today you must be free. Oh. And everything that was stolen from your life on account of any legal transaction with the devil will be restored tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. So I don't even know where we are going to start from. Where do we deal with accusations? Because deliverance is just too broad. It's just, I don't know where, do we talk about accusations? Do we talk about... <laughs> Amen. Okay, let's start like this. I want to talk about addictions. What I wanted us to talk about today was dealing with addictions and witchcraft. Alright, but the witchcraft we want to talk about today is on a higher level. But then, because of the what the spirituality did, I, I felt like maybe I need to talk about accusations. Okay, let me just let me just rush it like this. Then we'll go into addictions. Um, okay, Zechariah chapter three. This is not the teaching, but let let's start from here. Then we'll go back to what we want to deal with. Because we need to talk about accusations. First of all, Revelations 12. Revelations 12. Verse 10. Then we'll go back to Zechariah chapter 3 verse 1. Let's talk about accusations. Dealing with accusations. Then we will now start the teaching for the day. We'll talk about addictions. Because when we are talking about addictions... You will now see why Satan has a right over people and can accuse them in heaven with or without them. You see the thing. <laughs> you saw the law court that happened here, the, the, that they played here. Now the thing is, the lady in the drama, the lady was watching what was happening. But you here, you don't know how many times the court in heaven has sat over you. right now you don't even know whether there's a case on you somebody you cheated two years ago and the person is still crying vengeance in his heart you don't know whether that case is against you an abortion you committed three years ago but now you are a believer you are a new creature in christ jesus you are the most holy now but something is still crying there and you don't know that there is something in the court of heaven against you could that be the reason why you are praying and fasting and it seems like god is silent because God said in Isaiah 59 verse 1 that your, my, the, the hand of the Lord is not too short to deliver you. Neither is his ear deaf to hear you. The God that knows your thoughts even before you think it. 
he said but yours your iniquity before he talked about sins he said your iniquity that iniquity gives birth to sin I don't want to get you afraid tonight. I just need to show us so that we can understand. Because you, you, you can't see that court the way this one was looking at the court here. So let's talk about accusations first before we now talk about addictions and then we'll talk about, I want us to talk about that witchcraft because somebody will die this night. Are you hearing me? This is a different apostle today. Oh. I said, somebody will die tonight. Yeah. Next week, you come back, we'll teach about the glory, the power, the kingdom. But tonight, oh, is judgment night. Yeah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? As some people, if they don't die, you will not, you will not rise. Let me just tell you. There are some people, the longer they stay alive, they have, they are, their lifespan has been lengthened with your riches. Do you know that riches is spiritual? Riches is spiritual. It's not just what you do. No. Riches is spiritual. In fact, riches, I believe, are spirits. Because the Bible says, It is the blessing of the Lord that maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. Now, Ephesians 1 verse 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every... With every what? With every word. So the blessings are what? Spiritual. And the blessings of the Lord make it rich. So if the blessings of the Lord makes one rich. And the, the blessings are spiritual. That means riches are what? You didn't hear me, man. So even if you sow seed, even if you walk, you do everything. You need to know how to transact with those spirits. So that they can make your life a habitation. Now, the thing with witchcraft is that they master. Let me not go among, uh, ahead of myself. Let's talk about accusations first. Revelations 12. God help me this night. It's already 5 30. <laughs> hey. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren. Who accused them before our God day and night has been what excuse me is it New Testament or Old Testament when the Bible used the word brethren who is he talking about is it not Christians okay so he said the accuser of who our brethren so Satan in the realm of the spirit is a legal uh, practitioner he's not an SAN senior advocate of Nigeria is is an sab senior accuser of believers that's who he is he's a prosecution witness that's that's his work a prosecution counsel are you hearing me so the, he has he has he has created a system the kingdom of darkness is a, is a well structured and intelligent system to the, and there are departments in that kingdom that are saddled with the responsibility of researching into families generation upon generation dispensation upon dispensation to find out what they have done that has transgressed the law of god so that they satan can have evidence such as that and go before the court of heaven and accuse believers from that family he doesn't care about the unbelievers there that's why you see a family where people are getting pregnant out of wedlock and they have children nothing is happening to them but the lady that says, i will keep myself till i get married to marry is a struggle is a problem this so this just answers to you why bad people seem to be prospering and good people but if you read psalm 37 if you read psalm 73 your heart will be at rest he said, fret not for, weak, for the wicked, neither be envious of evil doers. He said, for they shall soon we die as the hell, as the grass. Satan will not do anything with them because they are already going to hell. But you that have decided to do the right thing, it's not just about you. 
is because if you can live a righteous life you have set a pattern a new pattern in that family so that generations after you will walk in the paths of righteousness and satan has no hold over that family that's why it's coming for you that's why at 35 you are not married as a lady but i bring you a word tonight the bible says in revelations where we read it says, for the accuser that accused our brethren day and night is what has been cast down let's read verse 11 just as a prophecy to someone it say for they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the words of their testimonies and they loved not their lives unto the dead they overcame him by the blood of the lamb the blood will speak for somebody today so zechariah chapter 3 verse 1 now in zechariah chapter 3 verse 1 the bible says from verse 1 that joshua the high priest of israel was standing before god this was a vision it didn't happen real this was a vision and when i say it didn't happen real i mean it didn't happen physically but it was a real time experience zechariah was taken in a vision into heaven remember zechariah was one of the prophets during the time of the return from babylon so God gave him a vision and in this vision he saw Joshua the high priest the one who was to stand as an intercessor and a mediator between Israel and God the one who offered sacrifices for atonement it is the sacrifice that he offered to God that will make atonement for their sin so any transaction that happens between Joshua and God will determine whether the people of Israel are being excused from their sin or whether God will punish them that means that the hope of, of, of holiness, the hope of righteousness and of divine blessing for an entire nation was hanging on the shoulders of one man. Yet, this is the vision Zechariah saw. He said, then he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing at his right hand to oppose him. Now, if the Bible says Satan stood at the right hand, spiritually, when you talk with spirits and immortals, right hand is not just right hand. Right hand means the highest position of favor, of influence and authority. That's how spirits view right hand. That's how immortals view right hand. When Rachel was to die, she wanted to curse her son. You know, I don't know what kind of family that was. All the children it was the women that were giving them name that's why they had all kinds of funny name levi join they were they were giving names to their children because of their personal beef with one another he said now nah, i've given my husband three sons now my husband will be joined to me yet he still loved rachel then she gave back to another son judah he said well even if you don't look my face again i'll still praise god name him judah praise so all the children of Jacob, it was his wife that was giving them names, giving them, I, I hope you know, that is disastrous. Because headship in the family has been given to a man. This is not about gender-based, gender-based violence. This is about spiritual authority. Are you hearing me? And uh, don't you dare say that the, the, uh, the head is, the, the men is, the men are the head, the women are the neck. There's nothing like that. The neck is part of the head. The Bible said he took out of the reap. No be so. Man of God. He took out of the reap. Amen. Now that doesn't mean that the men should just you know. <laughs> you know the scriptures of course. As the man submits to Christ, that's how the woman should submit to the authority. But you know, don't don't compare. You see, if you fight for a position that you were not spiritually empowered to occupy, when you get there, you will have to survive yourself. Asking good mothers. No, you go and ask them. So you are sitting there, say, "Well, me, I don't care about all these all men are liars, men are fake." Are you serious? Including the one talking to you. <laughs> Wait. and now you are coming after the service you want to sit here for counseling and you are there saying all men are liars all men are 
that's the reason why you are where you are because even the prophet that God should use over your life and your destiny to shift it you have said with your mouth that all men are it's not true all men are not liars just the way all women are not stubborn they are good women you have just not looked well you have been looking with your two eyes these physical eyes look with your spiritual eyes is that not so ma yeah. where was i before we entered this debate <laughs> see we have communion to take today okay with all apologies to those following don't worry it's part of the service okay there's joy in the presence of the lord so where was i eh eh okay rachel was so rachel was about to die when she was giving birth to and she was the cause of that that affliction remember when jacob was leaving his his his, his uncle's house rachel stole the gods god wants to set you free from the limitations of your father's house but you say no i will go with it and when laban came to the camp jacob said anyone you see with it let him die that was another mistake he made that was another mistake he made because he had headship and authority and remember i think that was when he had uh, he had met with an angel i think that he had met with an angel that period so he had already pronounced a curse on rachel and the bible says rachel to compound the problem she sat on the gods That was why when it was time to give birth she was experiencing hard labor and when she was about to die she decided to name the child after her sorrow she named him benoni son of my sorrow jacob said no way women will not have their way again he said you will not be son of my sorrow you will be son of my right hand benjamin and that is the reason why if you study the scriptures benjamin seemed to be the strongest tribe when it comes to war Benjamin, where in fact in Judges chapter 21, Israel, 11, 10 tribes fought against one tribe. Two times the one tribe defeated the 10 tribes. It was not because of how many weapons they had. David said, you come against me with spear and, and sword and javelin. He said, but I come against you in the name of the Lord. You see, I'm just saying this to let you know how that life is spiritual. And if you understand the intelligence of the spirit, you are already at, at a, a big and a great advantage. Now the Bible says Satan was at the right hand, accusing Joshua. And what happened? The accusation would have continued, except that God had to interrupt, speaking through the angel. And the angel said, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. He says, is this not a brand plucked out of the fire? keep that verse on the screen is this not a brand plucked out of the fire let me explain that to you when the angel was rebuking satan the angel did not have any legal ground to rebuke the to, to counter the accusations that satan was bringing because the accusations were correct the bible says joshua was wearing filthy garments and in habakkuk chapter 1 verse 13 he said thou art but a purer eyes to behold iniquity sin cannot stand before god so any man that lives in sin is already a reproach the sin has it the bible says we read it in isaiah 59 verse 1 it says your sin has hidden his face from you so the angel did not have anything legally to cancel the accusation satan was bringing he had to use something else he says this is a brand plucked out of fire in other words Joshua, yes, Joshua is in sin. And you have the right to accuse him because of his sin. But are you aware that Joshua and the children of Israel went through a season of affliction? Remember, they went to Babylon for 70 years. And God told them through Jeremiah the prophet, he said, so that the land can be purged of your iniquities. So the, the going to Babylon was the punishment for their sins and atrocities generation after generation. So as far as God was concerned, when they came back from captivity in Babylon, they had paid the price for what their fathers did. 
so that was what the angel brought he brought another strong reason he said is this not a brand pluck he was not just talking to joshua joshua was representing israel if this is a brand plucked out of fire they just came back from 70 years captivity they have paid the price therefore you have no right to keep accusing them so there are times when for you to bring freedom to a family you need to take strong reasons from the word of god because biologically speaking they may have erred physically speaking god may be against them because they have transgressed and you know the thing with sin <laughs> when you commit sin <laughs> that's why god had to counter that proverb in ezekiel 18 he said no longer will this proverb be used that the fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge he said for all souls are mine and the soul that sins shall die so when a man sins the repercussion is death for the wages of sin is death romans 6 23 but the gift of god is eternal life however if a man sins death is the penalty against him but his sin was an action that action will cause a reaction which will produce consequences the consequences may not come back to meet him because he may have died the consequences will come back to meet somebody within the bloodline did you understand what i'm saying so god will forgive you for the sin but the consequence will still come and that's the reason why when you understand justification and what god has done for you it is by prayer now that you enforce it as a reality in your life so that satan does not take advantage of the consequence of sin to afflict you i don't know if you are understanding what i'm saying that's the reason why two people slept together they slept with themselves they are not married and they woke up and knelt down asked for forgiveness and fasted for three days did this stop a child from coming So he was making accusations accusations can be made on three grounds either on the ground of a spoken word either on the ground of a written ordinance or on the ground of blood so if someone placed a curse on someone else or someone made an enchantment against an individual satan can accuse that person before god and the reason for accusation is so that satan can have access to the life of that man the reason for accusation is so that satan can have legal access remember what he told god when god was boasting about job he said is it not because you have blessed him and put an edge around him satan was looking for access so the reason why he took up the profession of accuser of the brethren is just for one reason access because god said in zechariah 2 verse 5 this is god's blessing and promise for his covenant children this is yours he said for i will be to them a wall of fire round about them and the glory in their midst imagine when the fire of god surrounds you satan has no no legal no legal access so the reason for accusation is just so that he can enter that's why the bible calls him a thief because if there is no legal access he decides to jump through the window and come in and when he comes in like that that's when you can rebuke him and re you can resist him but when he is coming in on a on the ground of illegal access and that access is probably because something or because of something you had said that transgressed against god or maybe somebody placed a curse on you especially if that person is within the family or maybe something that has been written against you because the bible speaks about blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that were written against us people file petitions in court the same way they file petitions in the court of heaven satan can lay petitions against a believer satan can lay petitions against the church satan can lay petitions especially if that church is the lampstand of that city and then 
all of a sudden immorality is going on everywhere the members are stealing cheating one another they are not serious with god again now satan wants to destroy the city but this church is a lampstand it's a stronghold because of that church god is securing the city so satan has seen something that he will use as an accusation he will go to god say how can you call these people your holy people look at them immorality they are sleeping with themselves look at their pastor he's stealing the church offering look at how unserious they are with god they go to church when they want and they go to church late how can you call this your holy people and by the time he has he has concluded you know when they write 99 petitions against you <laughs> god will say all right you can have your way maybe god had given time for the people to repent and they refused to repent because jesus is always standing pleading before god showing him his blood but when the sin has become too much because there's there's something such as the sin becomes full god said that about sodom and gomorrah when it has become too much god would decide okay the only way to bring deliverance is to purge this church and the way to purge the church is accuser you have your way go and afflict them go and try them in the midst of the affliction they will look for me they will turn back to me if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves you now see why you shouldn't joke with your work with god you don't joke with your service in the house of god you don't play around like your friends want to blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly nor standeth in the ways of sinners nor sit in the seat of scornful the reason why you can't afford all that is because there is an accuser those people that you want to follow and do all those nonsense maybe there is no petition against them because satan already has their family but you are the saving you are the hope of a generation you are the savior of a, of a nation you are the security you are the stronghold of a territory it's not every pastor that is just called to pastor a church there are some pastors called to pastor a city if they begin to default in their work with God, that city is in trouble. Are we here tonight? So the accusations can either be on the ground of a spoken word or a written ordinance or blood. Blood was spilled. Blood was shed. Innocent blood. Maybe because of war, because of violence, because of abortion. that's why men of God and all the ministers let me just give you an advice especially all the ministers scattered across if you are praying for somebody who cannot conceive or who has had miscarriage and the more you pray is the more you are not seeing any answer or the cycle repeats itself you need to ask them some questions every time you see a cycle of affliction the barrenness continues miscarriage continues sir don't kill yourself ask a question what did you do you will just labor in vain in some cases it can even be that the, it was not the person that committed anything it was the mother that committed but that thing that action was not dealt with by the blood of jesus god is loving jesus died for our sins yet god said if you confess your sin you don't just sweep it under the carpet and close it and go no there's no even time to talk about addictions again <laughs> there's no time to talk about so satan can accuse based on these three on these three and it is this is rampant in society if blood is not shed because the rig election blood is shed because of boko haram or banditry or violence or intertribal war blood must be shed one way or the other or even wickedness household wickedness 
that's why we are coming to witchcraft or there is an ordinance or something spoken but today anything that was spoken or written against you or any blood that is crying against your father's house or your mother's house by the blood of jesus christ we cancel that record we cancel that record the bible says in hebrews chapter 12 he says that the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things the blood has voice he can speak he can speak do you know that the blood of jesus listen <laughs> The blood of Jesus was not shed for you. It was shed on you. Hold on. It was not shed for you. When Jesus died, remember when he rose up and Mary met him at the graveyard, when she recognized he was the one, what did Jesus say? He said, don't touch me, for I have not done what? Ascended to my Father in heaven to do what? To atone. And how does a priest atone? He atones with blood. When you kill the animal, you drain the blood and take it into the temple. So the blood, the sacrifice, the blood that is shed is for God. It's his throne that is crying justice and judgment against sin and iniquity. So the blood is shed for him so that the throne will no longer cry justice and judgment. It will cry mercy. The blood of Jesus was not shed for you. It was shed on you. It was shed so that God can be appeased. And the claims of divine justice can be met. Yet it has an effect on you. And the effect is that it is able to speak on your behalf. That's the power of the blood. So every time you engage the mystery of the blood, you are engaging that voice that is able to speak. And you know, the bloodline is the last line of defense in the kingdom. After nine plagues, Pharaoh was still stubborn. In fact, Pharaoh told Moses, say, don't see my, if you see my face again, you will die. Moses said, you are right, I will never see your face again. Moses went back and God said, okay, it's time to use the blood. Come outside. He said, tell them to take a lamb. A year old without blemish sprinkle the blood on the household he said and when i see the blood i will do what pass over that's why i said the blood was not shed for you it was shed on so every time you are dealing with accusations that there are demons in people's that that, that is what the product of all those kind of accusation are the following for instance you find people who are oppressed in their dreams any form of oppression in the dream that you have prayed about you have fasted about and is not going there is an accusation that is sponsoring it that is lawful captivity something is wrong and it is empowering and enforcing that to happen you prayed for three days fasted for three days and three nights and then on the third night after you broke your fast the spirit still came again and slept with you accusation you need to understand what to engage to counter it and there's nothing as powerful as engaging the blood even some addictions you find in families i don't have time i can't go to my jota again because god is just it seems god is moving the whole thing to another level now several kinds of addictions you find in the life of an individual some addictions come because the person willfully indulged in it and now the spirit behind that has come to strengthen and to enforce that operation so the person cannot stop drug abuse the person cannot stop alcohol i've seen families where even those who are members of churches deacons in churches they still sneak out to take alcohol somebody told me that he was watching something online somewhere i think maybe at the southern part of this country in a bar they were playing worldly music and as soon as the dj switched into a gospel song the people began to dance what kind of a generation is that god and the gods inside one man god and alcohol 
I've seen families like that struggling with alcohol. All kinds of addictions, sexual addictions, that's even the worst. Where you have masturbation, pornography, and all that. So sometimes it is personal indulgence. And because you sold your soul to it because of an act of your will, God has no right to stop the enemy. Because you sold yourself to it. He said, To whom you yield yourself, slave, please be seated. To whom you yield yourselves, servants to become, slaves you become of. Some other people, the addictions came on them because it was passed down. Somebody was an alcohol addict in the family. Your grandfather, you didn't know. He loved alcohol. Every morning, he would go to the back of his house and pour libations for the gods. And depending on the state you come from, if you come from maybe Delta State, by the grace of God, where they can wash, they can use it to wash their mouth in the morning without due respect to those of them. But you know that's culture in some places and they'll wash their mouth and pour it and speak to the gods and ask the gods for blessing and blessing then you now came him that man now because he was the head of the family he dedicated his entire generations to that spirit of alcohol so in every generation the spirit will come demanding allegiance demanding worship so you, you say, if any man be in Christ, is a new creature. I'm a, I'm a new creature. I'm free indeed. The Spirit is in a lie. You are free by the books. <laughs> but you are not free physically. Because someone gave you to me. Are you hearing me? If they happen, no, better believe me. You know, in the north, yeah, it's like we don't have too much problem. The only problem we have is witchcraft. Because there's witchcraft in the north. Go to Adama State. Amen. No, maybe we don't have too much problem. Maybe you need to travel to the south, travel to the west. Eh? Travel to some places where they will tell you, before you marry our daughter, you must test her first. And that's how immorality has continued for 42 generations in the family. So the ladies now don't know why men are not serious about getting married. They are only serious about their body. And now she has slept with five and none of them they all promised to marry but they've run away accusations and addictions these things are real i'm telling you and until you deal with it appropriately until you realize what the justice of god has provided or what justific justification has made available for you in christ jesus until you understand it and appropriate it which is nothing but the power that is in the blood of Jesus and insisting that it undoes, that, 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 that it takes away and it clears out every record that is against you so that the spirit has no right over you until you do that. Remain there. But tonight somebody will be free. Let's talk about bewitchment before we pray i said witchcraft you know bewitchment that's actually what i want to talk about not just witchcraft bewitchment now i oh god well we'll come to it another day maybe if jesus studies will come we'll come back there are a lot of things i wanted to deal with a lot of things like how you can be free from pornography masturbation or addictions of all kinds but there's no time to go there again so let's talk about the last aspect which is bewitchment bewitchment is also another aspect of lawful captivity in the life of an individual bewitchment is actually coined from the word witchcraft which is from the word witch so you need to understand who a witch is the word witch means to bend the word niche, witch means 
to divert. Now, in Galatians chapter 3 verse 1, the Bible says Paul was writing to the church. He said, oh foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? When you read that verse completely to verse 5, you will discover that what Paul meant by bewitchment was that their faith had been diverted. They used to believe the right thing, but they were made to believe the wrong thing now. That's why he said that you started in the spirit, but now you are ending in the flesh. So that is what witchcraft is all about. It's a satanic masterpiece that is able to bend or divert. Witchcraft is a very broad subject, is a very broad operation in the kingdom of darkness. Witchcraft happens through human mercenaries. And the reason why witch bewitchment is an aspect of lawful captivity is because the effect of a witch in the life of a man is only if that witch is connected or related to that man in any way. Did you hear what I said? If that man is connected to the witch one way or another that is when bewitchment can find expression and i'm going to give you all the signs and then we are going to pray it is possible for an individual to be bewitched it is possible thank god that's why i read it from galatians chapter 3 it is possible for a christian to be bewitched it's just if you can be diverted the wrong way if satan can make you believe the lie as the truth and that's the reason why in these last days we need discernment of spirit your judgment of the truth will not just be by what people say or how they appear you will need an ability by the spirit of god to probe into their heart ask jesus even after prayer all night he came down and chose 12 disciples one of them was still a judas you can't know people on the surface so an individual can be bewitched and satan will have access over the person's life either if that person through bewitchment has now embraced the lie as the truth satan will have legal access into his life to afflict him and if you ask satan he will tell you well he is the one he sold himself to believe the lie uh, not the truth the Bible says you shall know the truth and it shall set you free. What of if you know the lie? What will happen to you? Or Satan will tell you, well, I have access to his life because the person bewitching him is a family member or is somebody close by. They are the same blood. So I have. That's why bewitchment can be an aspect of lawful captivity. So an individual can be bewitched. A family can be bewitched. A nation can be bewitched. A church can be bewitched. I heard the story of a particular church that they had somebody, I'll tell you two stories here. They had somebody in the church who had so-called the gift of prophecy. And anytime they pray so high in the spirit, the person will speak in tongues louder than everybody and say he sees death, death is coming to somebody in this church. They must pray, should pray, they should pray. And before the end of that year, somebody we die the next year he came again spoke in tongues spoke in tongues and began to prophesy say there's death there's death you know that kind of prophecy say there's death here somebody will and before the end of the year the person died the third year again the same thing you know what the members of the church started doing instead of them to go to god and say why why this pattern they say this guy is a true prophet of god is the eye of the church all his prophecies come to pass somebody say bewitchment hey church years ago we went i don't know if we went together with you to shagari locus there was somebody who went to put one of our our brothers then and we went to the house to see the family and it so happened that when we arrived that day everybody was sick in the house and the mom was at the point of death so as we began to pray the lord opened our eyes we saw some things dealt with it and the woman was free 
when she sat back and I began to talk with her, how did the affliction start? I mean, she was at the point of death. This is how the affliction start. She joined the prayer band in her church. And they began to pray. And then God showed her a revelation that there were witches in the church. That they needed to pray against them. And she went and told the leader of the prayer band, who happened to be the chief witch. Yeah, this is not, it is here. Yeah, I won't mention if I, you will know the person I'm talking about. I won't mention the name. Here in this town, this is not then say, I was, this is life. So when she told the, the head, he said, okay, we'll pray, we'll pray. Then the head said, okay, now us, you want to come kill. So they gang up against her and began to fire their arrows at her. It was God, otherwise she was already dying. Acts chapter 8, the Bible spoke of a man called Simon the Sorcerer. From verse 9 and verse 10. Look at what the Bible says about this man. He said, who previously practiced sorcery in the city and astonished the people of Samaria, claiming that he was someone great. They were bamboozled by what he did. They were so deceived by his act of witchcraft. Maybe they called it prophecy. Maybe they called it miracles. They didn't know it was divination. It was witchcraft. They were so deceived that this was what they said. He said, to whom they all gave heed. From the least to the greatest. Saying, this man is the great power of God. If you read it in the Living Bible Translation. This is what he says. He said, they said that this man is the Messiah to come. The living Bible. That's what it says. So he so deceived them, they thought it was Jesus. Go on. Go on. Now give us this, give us in King James. And to him they had regard, because that of long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. Remember, I said bewitch means to divert to bend to twist they will never suspect you are the one they are the ones that tie their scarf the most i heard of a story many years ago i think we were still in lagos then about a pastor who married a woman i don't know maybe the woman was in the church or so she appeared to be the most spiritual woman in the church <laughs> brothers well we will come to marry i don't know if we'll do marriage and relationship because i just in the way as i pray by the privilege of grace the way i'm praying we need to help brothers single brothers because many people when they show you that this is they pray that this is the will of god you just know this one is deceived spirituality you know they show for face just the way aids you know they show for face she can wear a jean trouser but she may be highly spiritual she can wear a long skirt and cover her legs like a rabbi and be a delilah am i saying dress anyhow no No, we, we need to pray and help some of our brothers though, because the way I don't know, sir, it's based on experience. I'm just that's why I don't want to start, I don't want to talk again when it comes to that area. If you come and meet me and say this is the person, what, what is God saying? I'll tell you that's the one. No, I, I know they do again. The pastor married the woman who in the name of she was the most spiritual, the most anointed, but from the time he married that woman problem in the house problem upon problem and then he noticed that the woman will not remove her head gear one day i don't know whether by prophetic injunction or by discernment or what he asked her to oh this your hair where you know the degree open remove it she refused and while they were fighting fighting he removed it the story said when he removed the scarf he saw two horns in the head somebody said bewitchment it's true as you laugh like this some of you you may not know whether there are people planted by the enemy around your life they may not use evil powers but they've been giving you the wrong counsel there was a man called jonadab he was the counselor and the confident friend of ammon the son of david and he led him to his death ammon said i'm in love with my sister what do i do jonadab say this is how to get her that's the kind of friend you have Somebody said bewitchment. And when Absalom killed Ammon, Jonadab came 
and reported a false news to David. It's as if Jonadab was a witch that they sent to David's house to destroy the whole house. This night we are going to pray. Any evil personality that the enemy has planted around your life. That the enemy is using to control you towards the wrong direction in life. God is going to uproot them. In Matthew chapter 10, Jesus said a man's enemy are those of his household. So when we talk bewitchment in this context, it is in two folds. It is either it is due to household wickedness. Maybe the person is the same blood with you. A man's enemies are those of his household. That's Matthew 10, 36. If you start reading from verse 34, Jesus said, I came with a sword to the earth. Hold on. What does sword represent? Sword represents judgment. And Exodus 22, what did he say in verse 19? He says, suffer not a witch. To... So that scripture was not just talking about, you know, many of us believe that scripture was talking about, you know, uh, 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 um, father will just hate children son will hate father daughter will hate because of the gospel no 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 no. he was talking about judgment the judgmental side of the gospel he said i came with a sword not a peace and because of that what will happen next verse he said he who sacrificed no 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 go go back to matthew now who is there i hope it's not bewitchment too Eh? I want to show you something there. I want us to stand up and pray now. I want to show you something there. I saw this just yesterday while I was reading the Bible. Verse 34. Go back there. He said, do not think that I came to bring peace on the earth. Remember who Jesus was talking to? He was talking to his disciples. He was sending them to go preach the gospel. In Matthew chapter 10. And he had told them that there are places where you'll be rejected. He said, when they reject you, what do you do? Shake the dust off your feet. He said, for it will be more terrible for those cities than for Sodom. He was already pronouncing judgment over the cities that will reject them when they go to preach. In fact, in the same chapter, Jesus began to say woe to certain cities. Woe unto this city because they rejected the gospel. Woe unto that city. If you read right from the beginning. So this is in context here. Now Jesus says, do not think I came to bring peace on the earth. I didn't come with peace but with a sword. Next verse. He said, for I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Verse 36. For a man's enemies are those of his own household. You see, you will understand this scripture more when you realize that Jesus was dealing with witchcraft here. He said, I have come with a sword. Sword represents judgment. And the Bible says, the sword of the spirit is the word of God. In other words, I have come as the light to expose the hidden things of darkness. So when the word of God and the gospel comes to a family, then all of a sudden a daughter-in-law may turn and realize the witch in that family was the mother-in-law. You guys are not here. You don't, you don't like this kind of gospel. That's why I say for a man's enemies are those. Is he saying suspect? No. But brothers and sisters, this thing is real. This is Africa we are living in. If you don't know. Where home video is alive. Is real. I'm not telling you go back and go and hate people. I'm just telling you that these things are real. I was listening to Apostle John C. Suleiman. God's servant. And he, was, he, he said he went to London one time for a meeting. And while he was in the hotel at the lobby some nigerians saw him and they ran to greet him oh you know, apostle are you here you came for program all of that kneeling down greeting him you know just to honor him and all and there was a white woman who was somewhere in the lobby looking at them she was talking to someone I said why are they kneeling down for him they say well he's, he's, he's a man of god he's a pastor he's a man of god what's that say is he a priest he say well you know a man of god so she was offended by that and then John C. Suleiman apostle noticed her and then he called her and by the prophet you know how that man is he said come you have been married for five years five years no child she said wait a minute how did you know that he said when you go this night something will happen and you'll come back and look for me the next day he was in this room the phone the intercom you know what they used to communicate was ringing up and down the receptionist came to his room and said please sir there is fire downstairs. You need to come and help us handle the situation. When he came down, lo and behold, who did he see? He saw the woman. 
The woman said, Apostle, Apostle. That was the woman that said, He said, Apostle, you're a man of God. You're a man of God. You're right. What happened? When she went home that night, she woke up around 2 a.m. I think she wanted to do something and then she noticed her mother was not around. So she went around the house looking for her mother. And all of a sudden, she went towards the, where the trash can, you know, what we call dustbin, dustbin, dustbin. Where the trash can, but people watching from London, they say, you say trash can, you say the dumb, dumby, but you know, for Nigeria, I say dustbin. So, <laughs> so, when she went there, she saw her mother. Her mother was with her, the ladies used pads, sanitary pads, and she was sucking the blood that was on it bewitchment now you understand Matthew chapter 10 so you thought you had understood that scripture now you understand it any witch any strong man that is hidden in any families here yeah. for years you don't know that they are the ones that have been manipulating the destinies of men why this oppression why this delay why this yoke why is our own like this i knock on the door of thunder and i declare in the name of jesus they are going down i said they are going down today they are going down today remain standing we are going to pray there's no no need to teach the kingdom of god is not in word it's in power there's no need to teach power will handle it today listen to me it says in psalms 80 it says you called upon me and i answered you from the secret place of thunder this night thunder will blast though lightning will strike listen jesus said love your enemies eh? but destroy the witches did you hear what i said love your enemies what do you do with the witches when jesus you, you need to you need to understand your bible hold on hold on we are going to pray jesus said love your enemies understand what he was saying there he was talking to the israelites those that now believed in him remember that some of the jews didn't believe in jesus so those jews that didn't believe in jesus began to persecute the jews that believed in jesus it was in that context that Jesus was saying, love them, pray for them, give them food. This is just sheer hatred because of personal opinion. Not a witch. Not somebody that consults dark powers to kill you. Not somebody that is wasting your finance. You are paying tight. You are giving kingdom investments. You are giving all kinds of sacrifice. But somebody somewhere with a mirror, conjuring and transferring all you are working for. In Nigeria, those of you listening from outside the nation, they say in Nigeria, monkey, they walk, babu, they chop. This night, they will go down. Oh. There's only one thing you do to witchcraft. Expose it and terminate it. That's the end. Expose it. Terminate it. Are you ready to pray this night? God is going to listen. God is going to break addictions. God is going to bring deliverance to lawful captives. But this night cannot be over until the strong man around your vicinity goes down. Some of you, I, I know somebody who came to me one time. Say every night by so so time, a bed stands on a roof opposite their window and cries. Just because the bed, that's the only roof in the whole city. No, that's satanic surveillance. They are monitoring you. Satanic surveillance. Every time there's a full moon, which is due all night. They con I don't have to, oh, there are things I wanted to show you today. I wanted to talk to you about witchcraft summons. How they conjure spirit. How they can summon the soul of an individual. And when they summon you in the coven of witchcraft, they summon you because of the good that you do. Are you hearing me? When they summon you to court, it's because of an offense you committed. But in the coven, they summon you because you did good. Oh, yes. This is wickedness at its peak. 
those kind of people are not fit to live they are not fit to be alive they've sold their soul to wickedness today thunder will blast if they like if they have immortalized their stay in your family by covenanting with a tree a tree in your father's house this night thunder will strike and divide that tree. are you ready to pray this night say after me in the name of jesus wait before we pray let's let's make the altar call first huh because if you pray some kind of prayer here and you are not born again <laughs> You may just go down no? are you hearing me tonight is red night red night those days when we were in secondary school there is something we used to do we call it red night i don't know those of you who went to boarding house huh it's a wicked thing no you know god has forgiven i've i've confessed my sins i've we've pleaded the blood <laughs> red night is the night before you go on vacation so that night some people will be possessed some sons and daughters of billiard because when we were in junior class we thought it was only guys that did red night when we entered senior class we heard that our our females they had some sons and daughters of billiard they'll go around and disturb people you'll be sleeping they'll come flog you with belt and off the light when you wake up they run away amen now it's time for us to reply them it's time for us to reply the altars of your father's house. It's time for us to reply the spirits that have been laying claim over you. Spirits that will appear using the face of all kinds of people. As if it is a right for them to keep you perpetually bound. It's time for us to reply them. But listen, deliverance is only possible. Because Jesus took our place on the cross. He made him. Who was without sin to become sin that we may become the righteousness of god in christ jesus jesus took on sin on himself and that's why god turned his back on him he died so that we can be saved before we pray let's do the altar call here very quickly so that those who need to make amends with god tonight will make amends if you're standing here whether online whether inside or outside under the sound of my voice if you are here and jesus is not the lord of your life or perhaps you were a believer but today you are with god tomorrow you are with the world there are a lot of compromises around your life and you want to make amen why we are all standing wherever you are i want you to lift your right hands very high so that you can make peace with god today let's do this before we pray and take the communion if you are here and you want jesus to be lord over your life or you want to repent of your ways you were once born again but right now you don't know whether you are a believer or not and you want to return back to the lord lift your right hand where you are so that we can pray and please ensure that if there are people outside who are saying yes to jesus make sure we are aware of that if there is none we are going to pray but if you are here and you want to say yes to jesus say yes to jesus now lift your right hands all right if there is nobody then we are going to make a prayer okay where is that person god bless you is there check outside if there is anybody let me know raise your right hand just keep lifting that right hand now hold on if you are here you are a believer but there are different compromises in your life that nobody is aware of but you are aware of it's not like you don't want to stop but right now you are struggling you are a lawful captive you need to be saved again before you can be delivered i want you to lift your right hand as well all together we are going to lead them to jesus today and then we are going to pray god is going to deliver them please raise your right hand if your right hand is up can you just walk to the front quickly i will pray with you if you are here jesus is not lord over your life and you want to make amends with him come to the front or you are here you are struggling with some addictions you are struggling with some compromises you are ashamed of yourself and you are ashamed of it jesus wants to set you free make your way to the front now let's pray with you jesus said if you are ashamed of me before men i'll be ashamed of you before my father in heaven 
people are saved when they decide to let go of the shame and the reproach and surrender to Jesus. Those of you in the congregation, stretch your hands towards them. Those of you in front, put your right hand on your chest. Make this prayer after me. Tonight is your night of salvation. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I repent of my sins. As I'm talking to them, if you need to join them, join them now. Before we say amen. Say, Lord Jesus again. I come to you. I repent of my sins. I forsake my old ways. Thank you for dying for my salvation. I receive today eternal life. And I declare, henceforth, no going back. I say no to the world. I receive you into my heart. Save me. Deliver me. Set me free. In Jesus' name. Keep your right hand. Father, I stand in the name of Jesus and I declare that their sins are forgiven. I declare that every record that the enemy holds against them by the speaking blood, it is cancelled and deleted forever. Every evidence that the accuser has against them, we silence the voice of the accuser. We declare them justified. We declare them righteous and we declare that they will live and walk by the power of the Spirit of God all the days of their lives. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. Please stand up. God bless you. God bless you. I want you to turn to your right. The counselor is waiting for you. They will attend to you. God bless you. Please celebrate them. Direct them, please. Are we ready to pray? Say after me in the name of Jesus. I appear before the courts of heaven. I come through the blood of the Lamb. I ask, O oh Father, that today every accusation, every legal document, every legal transaction every case that is against me against my father's house against my mother's house or against my seed today by the blood of jesus i declare that the records against me in the heavenlies are cancelled are cancelled are deleted today by the power in the name of Jesus I declare that I am free in the name of Jesus Satan henceforth you have no right you have no reason to stand against me because I am declared righteous because I am justified because I am sanctified because Jesus has set me free and I declare that I am free indeed Open your mouth and turn that to prayer. Open your mouth and turn that to prayer. Let every record against you be cancelled. Let every handwriting of ordinances be deleted. Let every accusation of the accuser be silenced by the blood. Be silenced by the blood. 
We silence you, we silence you. Let the records be cancelled by the blood, by the blood. Let the handwriting of ordinances that is against us be deleted. Let the curse be broken. still praying. We are, going to, we are going to pray against altars now. Altars are spiritual monuments that are empowered to legislate over the lives of individuals in a family or in a territory. Any altar that has been speaking against you and your family we will silence it tonight. Remember, God appeared to Gideon and told him the first instruction. He said, destroy your father's altar. Every altar is serviced by a priest. Every altar is made alive by the sacrifices on it. But because of the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10, that there remaineth no, no, no longer any sacrifice. Any altar that is speaking from your village will be silenced tonight. And any altar that is speaking in your city will be silenced tonight. Say after me, every evil altar. Every evil altar. Speaking against me. Speaking against me. Speaking against my father's house. Speaking against my father's house. Speaking against my mother's house. Speaking against my mother's house. In my territory. In my territory. In my village. In my village. In my community. In my community. I stand by the blood of Jesus. I stand by the blood of Jesus. I stand by the fire of the Holy Ghost. I stand by the fire of the Holy Ghost. And I declare over that altar. And I declare over that altar. Be destroyed. Be destroyed. Be destroyed. Be destroyed. Be destroyed. Be destroyed. Open your mouth and pray. <laughs> By fire, 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 We are still praying. Listen, the Lord told me tonight. He said, deal with marine spirits. Can you be quiet for a minute? Can I explain something to you? 
Deliverance is also connected to knowledge. Can I explain something to you? Any spirit that comes to oppress in the dream, either by molesting an individual sexually, most times like that. In fact, the power of God is already here. There are people that God is setting free already. Help that lady, please. We are still praying, oh. Those spirits are classified under marine spirits. Please listen, listen. When Lucifer fell from heaven, he fell with some spirits. The Bible says he fell with one third of the angels. Those are not demons, those are angels. Are you hearing me? Some of them were hanging in space. Spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. Some of them fell on the earth. He said, for the devil, woe to the inhabitants of the earth, for the devil has come down to you, for he knows his time is short. Some of them fell in the water. They are called marine spirits. Do you know why marine spirits are more wicked and more adverse in their operations? That's because on earth, the element with the highest form of dominance is water. 70% of the earth's mass is what? Water. The same way 70% of your body mass is what? Water. And that's what witchcraft use. Are you ready to pray? Any covenant with marine spirits. When you find sexual addiction, alcohol addiction, marijuana, all those kind of addictions, they are sponsored by marine spirits. We are going to break any covenant that has held you bound. Are you ready to pray? Particularly those of you that come from riverine areas. Are you ready to pray? Marine spirits are the most, that I've seen, they are the most wicked spirits. They can hold you bound. They are so wicked, they can keep you in torment, regardless of what you do. But today we are standing by the blood of Jesus. That covenant, that transaction, whether it was made with or without your knowledge, it will break tonight. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Every covenant. Every covenant with marine spirits. With marine spirits that is working against me. That is working against me. Every transaction. Every transaction with spirits. With spirits from the waters. From the waters. With or without my knowledge. 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 I stand by the blood of Jesus. I stand by the blood of Jesus. And I command those covenants. And I command those covenants. Pray. Pray, 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 open your mouth and pray, in the name of Jesus, let them be broken, every covenant that was sealed with my own spirit, spirits from the coast, spirits from the waters, spirits from the oceans, continental spirits, Every covenant, every legal transaction by the blood of Jesus be broken, be broken, be broken, be broken, be annulled, be annulled, be annulled, be annulled, be destroyed. <laughs> we have prayed we are going to deal with spirits of the dead spirit of death there will be deliverance here this night though let's pray first then we'll take the communion then i will speak over your lives there will be massive deliverance 
in fact some of you right now as you are standing here whether you are here or you are following online light right where you stand as the power of god comes on you somebody will fall down in your hometown i'm telling you he said what is the what is the living doing among the dead it is only possible when necromancy is involved spirits from the dead the grave proverbs chapter 30 he said there are four things that never say enough one of it is the grave it keeps calling people there are families here is there it is like there are spirits assigned to just bring people to the grave every year people just keep dying we are going to silence those spirits this night say after me in the name of jesus in the name of jesus i come against i come against the spirit the spirit of necromancy, of necromancy. i come against i come against spirits, spirits of the dead of the dead any covenant any covenant any transaction any transaction that gives you license that gives you license to operate, to operate around my life around my life around my family around my family around all that concerns me around all that concerns me by the fire and by the blood by the fire and by the blood be destroyed be destroyed be destroyed be destroyed open your mouth and pray <laughs> and we are done say after me in the name of jesus in the name of jesus any form of bewitchment any form of bewitchment around my life around my life i can't hear you in the name of jesus in the name of jesus listen this kind of prayers you don't pray it calmly you have to be brutal are you hearing me you have to be brutal when you pray this kind of prayers you have to be angry there's something called holy anger in scriptures are you hearing me Say after me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say it again. In the name of Jesus. Shout it again. In the name of Jesus. Every form of bewitchment. Every form of bewitchment. Around my life. Around my life. Sponsored by witchcraft. Sponsored by witchcraft. Today. Today. Expire. 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 Open your mouth hey. and pray. Jesus. 
mighty name we pray. Finally, I say after me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We are going to deal with witchcraft now. Any strong man. And listen, no, listen. Any strong man and any strong woman. When we talk about strong men and strong women, we are talking about witches within a family. Those who have made a covenant with Satan, they will not serve God, they will serve Satan. And they know that because of their allegiance to Satan, your life it has, is at stake. It's time to pass sentence. Micah chapter 5 verse 12. Remember I told you there are only two things you do to witchcraft. Expose it and terminate it. Jesus said, love your enemies, but suffer not a witch to live. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Micah 5 verse 12. Give us in King James translation. Micah 5 12. We are going to pray this prayer very aggressively. I want you to pray. There will be casualties though. Some of you, the casualties you will not expect. Some of you may even cry. But weeping will endure for a night. So that joy will come in the morning. Are you ready to pray? And I will cut off witchcraft. Who is speaking? Who is speaking there? It's God now. Satan can, doesn't have the right to make this kind of statement in the Bible. He said, and I will cut off witchcraft out of thy hand and thou shalt have no more soothsayers. In fact, that was the reason why Jehu was anointed. He was anointed to destroy witchcraft. So strong was that anointing that Elisha told the servant he sent. He said, as soon as you pour the oil on him, take off, run away. Because he, he can start from there and he can start with you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? In fact, some of you, as you pray this prayer, a, an anointing will come on you. You will feel it. A strange unction will come on you. There is something called a judgmental unction. Are you hearing me? The Lord kill it and make it alive. I know you know him as the God of love. Hebrews 12:29 for our God is a consuming fire. are you ready to pray say after me in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus position yourself well we are going to pray that prayer stand very well listen as you stand eh? okay you just just whatever I ask you to declare declare it then we'll pray because some of you you will be transported right now to your village it's possible though. transportation is possible in the realm of the spirit and the spirit took philip and caught him away and the eunuch saw him no more you can appear in another place colossians 3 verse 4 and when christ who is our life appears we shall do what appear with him if you can appear you can disappear all this too much scripture is just to convince that doubting thomas there are you ready to pray Say after me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I stand by the God of heaven. I stand by the God of heaven. And by the power of the Spirit. And by the power of the Spirit. I appear in my father's house. I appear in my father's house. I appear in my mother's house. I appear in my mother's house. And I release. And I release the sword of vengeance. The sword of vengeance. Every strong man. Every strong man. Every strong woman. Every strong woman. Every witch. Every witch. Every wizard. Every wizard. Every agent. Every agent of the devil. Of the devil that has refused. That has refused. Us to rest. Us to rest. That has refused. That has refused to give us peace. To give us peace. I declare. I declare. Be destroyed. Be destroyed. Be destroyed. Be destroyed. I release. I release. The swarm. The swarm of vengeance. Of vengeance. Cut off. Cut off. And destroy. And destroy. Open your mouth and pray.